say there. So look what we got. This is what we got. All right. So this is what we're going to be painting. Okay. I'm just going to walk you through some steps here. Um, so you can gradually see the transformation of this guy into something that looks roughly like this guy. Okay. I'm not going to paint him in the exact same style. I'm going to paint him in a very similar style, very similar, similar style, but, 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 but. I'm going to mix it up a little bit, right? So I want it to look like, you know, it's a group of these guys, but, you know, if you have a group of guys from the same clan, doesn't mean that they're all going to look the exact same, right? So some fire giants will have more of this darker maroon looking kind of skin, a burgundy looking skin. Some of them will have more like a bright flaming red, reddish orange kind of skin, right? So I'm going to make him similar, but I'm going to make his skin a little bit brighter, right? So instead of this dark, you know, mahogany burgundy looking color, it's going to be similar, but it's not going to be as browned out. It's going to be a little bit more of your more traditional red. That being said, I'm going to make his hair a little bit less bright orange, right? It's going to be a little bit more of a darker to mid, like a medium, a medium orange, right? So I'm going to do a few things to make him look a little bit different. But fundamentally, this is more or less what this guy is going to look like once he's all done, painted, based, etc. So, kick things off, I'm just gonna run through roughly, I say roughly, the paints that are going to be used because guess what? Every single time I paint, I say, okay, I'm gonna use all of these paints and every single time I do not use that exact same combination, okay? So, I have black, just, you know what, because basically what happens is sometimes you see something and you're like, oh, actually, I think this would look a little bit better with this color as you're painting it, right? Or you're using one color and you're like, you know what, actually, I'm not huge on this. Let me scrap that and do something slightly different, right? So sometimes things change a little bit, but we have black, we have a dark silver, we have a light silver, we have this flat earth, okay, just like a normal old medium brown, we have orange brown, okay, we have brassy brass, we have brass, so we have a copper, a copper, a little bit of a darker copper, we have tin, we have orange, like a medium orange, classical orange, brighter orange, we have this khaki looking color, Japanese uniform, World War II. It's made to, you know, resemble the color of the uniforms from Japan from World War II. We have this carmine red, which is like a, a little bit of a darker red. Not super dark, but, a, you know, a little bit of a darker red. We have this skin wash. There's not much left, but this skin wash, it is actually fairly red, believe it or not. We have this Agrax Earth Shave, so like a darker brown wash. We have this Known Oil Shade, okay? So like a black wash, okay? So first thing, what we're gonna do is we're basically just base coating, okay? So I'm going to paint this all one color, this darker silver, okay? I'm going to paint his skin a darker to medium red, okay? Then I'm going to apply certain areas with different metallic colors, different leather colors, and that's more or less gonna be it for stage one. Then we're gonna do fine tuning to give it more, um, more realism, It's a good way to put it. We're gonna give it more shadow, we're going to make it more realistic, make it look more three-dimensional, okay? So, this is what we're going to do. Base coat them up. Then again, we're going to apply some shadows, some highlights, some washes. Maybe
maybe some dry brushes. We're going to bring out the different textures within him. Step one, base coating. So, so for step one, here we go. I just put a base coat covering skin, and that is basically about three-fourths of this carmine red and one-fourth of this black ink, roughly. You know, I didn't, like, portion it out perfectly, um, but, like, you can see um, his face is a little bit more red, but most paints like this will actually change color a little bit as they dry. So, some of this, I kind of put like two layers on, uh, just because it was a little streaky, you know? So, yeah, just apply a nice, decent, well-coated layer on, and it does not have to be 100% perfect, and you can do it kind of sloppily and hastily, like, if you get it, obviously, like I did, all over the dang place, that's fine, because honestly, in these big batches, it's gonna happen, um, and you're gonna fix it anyway, because you're gonna go over with another color, some spots even, like, two colors, or some light layers, and, you know, this and that, so it's gonna get covered up anyway, so don't worry about it too badly, you don't have to, you know, freak out if you get it on spots that it doesn't need to be. Just put some dark silver in a couple spots, just to select a few spots, because we're mostly going to be painting with tins and coppers. here. What I did is I just kind of wanted it in the cracks, right? I'm going to hit it with other colors, with some brass or some bronze. So for this, I'm just going to basically paint that area with a little bit more water than I normally would, and then just wipe it away like that. If you have a paper towel or, you know, something, you can use that, but honestly, I just use my fingers most of the time. next one.
this coat here in this quilted area, this gambeson. Um, I'm going to apply a base coat here, some sort of gray on this uh, stone rowan. I'm going to, you know, take care of this handle on the sheath in this little leather pouch. But uh, yeah, so next thing I'm going to kind of do an alternating pattern here. I'm mixing some orange and copper together and some yellow and bronze and I'm just going to kind of fill in these designs. Alright, so I just finished up with this quilted pattern here and I actually ended up using that same orange and copper on the handle of this here knife. I actually kind of like it. The reason why it comes out brighter is because I initially put more copper to orange in my mixing ratio. So basically, as I'm applying it, you know, I put down a darker layer and realized, okay, you know what, I'm going to brighten it up a little bit, right? So I put a little bit more orange into the mix, a little bit more water, mixed it up, you know? So it's actually a couple layers of orange and um, that uh, brassy yellow. So, that's why there's a little bit of a coloration difference between that. Uh, just because I had to put a couple of layers on here. And uh, it was already a little bit darker initially. So, as I add those brighter layers on there, uh, you know, it just kind of shines through a little bit more. Versus starting with here where you're already starting with that white. So, yeah. I'm just going to finish up base coating this, this, and this. So I'm going to do this in like a leather color. Uh, this is going to be uh, more like a darker reddish leather color. This is just going to be stone, so it's, you know, it's, it's just gray, nothing crazy. Uh, and for the handle, I'm going to do a gold brown paint. All right, so now we're looking at something along these lines. is it only sinks into the shadows because it's basically the consistency of like water or ink. So what it's going to do is it's going to bring shadow to these chain mail and instead of looking like one continuous just silver massive blob, it's going to look more realistic by creating shadows and all the individual rings so you'll be able to pick out each little ring. Alright, so it's going to look something like this, and if you noticed, I also applied it to the ruins here. Okay. So, the problem with this is it does um, darken your work, basically, so you've got to go back and dry brush later on. So, I will get back to that, so that's going to allow it to... In essence, still hold that shadow-like quality, but the ridges, the texture of it is going to be highlighted back again to be silver, but the shadows themselves will still stay pretty black. So you darken it just to lighten it again, just to kind of enhance the 3D texture of the chainmail. So I'm going to also do the section here to make it look glowing like a 
like it's charcoal or like there's lava flowing in the cracks. So I have this uh, reddish orange like homemade wash. So I'm just going to apply it to just the whole thing honestly because it is hard to get into those cracks. But before it dries, I'm going to kind of wipe it a little with my finger. To not get quite as much on the black spots, you know. But yeah, I'm going to do that on both sides. And then I'm going to wipe it up a little bit so that the black doesn't have that uh, as much of an orange color to it. I also went in and added it into the triangular pattern on his uh, wrists, on his gauntlets. If you'll notice here already, that uh, ink actually dried quicker than I imagined. On top of that, keep in mind that when you're putting a really bright color on top of something dark like this, it's going to fade when it starts drying. So honestly, I'm probably going to have to hit this two, three, four times to uh, keep the color like really popping and really vibrant. So now what I'm doing is I am just taking a little bit of a combination of that reddish orange ink and this uh, skin tone ink which does apply so rather more uh, brown. So if you notice here, that's basically it. It's a brownish red with that orangish red. So I'm basically putting barely any of it on my brush. And what I'm doing is I am just applying to select areas on his skin, right? So specifically on areas that pop out on his muscles like that. So it's gonna dry darker, but it's going to basically give him a bit more dimension and it's going to make certain areas on the more top parts of his muscles pop out and be a little bit more noticeable and it's going to keep the cracks a little bit darker but I also added a little bit of this medium kind of darkish red carmine red into it so it's not really a wash per se it's actually layering is what it is it's more like a layering um, a very very light glaze so that's actually what it's called it's called glazing so it's barely it is very wet but there's barely any in my brush at any given time, so it's not like a full-on layer of paint, right? So once this dries and I see what it looks like, I may or may not go back over another time or two, depending on what it looks like once it's dried. color 
just a little bit. I'm just going to go back with that same kind of medium silver, a little bit darker kind of silver. Uh, and just re-hit the uh, chainmail skirt a little bit to bring back the vibrancy, but still keep the uh, shadow in there. I'm also going to hit this again with a third wash. Awesome. So what we're doing here is we're just getting a little bit of paint and we're getting most of it out of the brush, right? And usually you want to use like a crappy old brush that uh, is pretty stiff. And we're just going to rub up against the ridges, right? So the chain is flowing this way vertically for the most part. So I am just kind of rubbing here on the top like that. Not being super careful, obviously. But uh, yeah, the ultimate goal is we're just kind of picking out the top parts of the rings of the chain mail and bringing in a bit more brightness and color to that. Not significantly. But uh, yeah, we're just putting in a little bit of like a highlight, so to speak, of the silver and still keeping the pooling, the shadowing that we added because of the wash. Now what I'm doing is I'm just applying a couple little dots and those stippling on the black parts here, this rock. Uh, you know, a little bit more of an illusion of heat. As if these rocks, these little charcoal bits, whatever you want to call, are warm. Like they're heating up. With the uh, magma flow and whatnot. You can even put a little bit of gray stippling around the very edges to, to kind of replicate as if part of the rock is turning a little ashy around the edges. And you gotta do that on both sides so it looks more uniform, you know? Okay, so now it's going to look a little something like this. So as you'll see, it's definitely grayed out and become a little more orange. Right, the back side came out a little bit better because the paint smeared a little spots on the front, but this is ultimately the kind of effect I'm going for. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back and step along in black, specifically in the center of all the little spots of the stone there, and that's going to darken it up a bit and uh, make it a little bit more uniform of a color, but uh, yeah, it's going to look more like this. It's just a tiny pinch darker, but uh, some of the stippling from the gray and the orange is still going to show through. But it'll look a little bit darker and a little bit more like what we started with. In essence, you're just fixing it up a little bit. And it's going to end up looking something like this. So like you can see, it definitely darkened up the center areas a bit. But you can still see a little bit of the... Uh, orange and gray bits in it too. It just looks a little more textured. So the end result to bring out a little bit more texture to three-dimensionality to it and make it look like the rocks themselves are heated because it would look kind of weird if there was this hot lava or magma flow around the rocks but the rocks themselves did not appear to actually be warming up as a result which is why we stippled on some of the ashy gray kind of color and a little bit of orange in a few spots. And then it became a bit too much, so we fixed it, basically, by applying the black and toned it down a bit. Okay. Now I am painting the eyes yellow. Just a flat yellow.
mostly just gently stippling the edges here first with this orange brown color and then with this here color uh, Japanese uniform World War II maybe that's what it's called could be Japanese World War II uniform I don't know but anyway I'm mostly just getting the edges of his leather pouch and a little bit into the edges so what this is going to do is it's going to replicate, rep I can't speak, replicate the fact that leather is not uniformly one color because it does get worn, specifically around the edges. <laughs> if 
you leave too big of a streak or too much of a patch of color, you can always just kind of dab it like so with your finger or the paper towel or something and it'll tone it down a little bit. And you can always go back and add your original color. So in this case, that red with a little bit of orange brown to kind of cover it up if you do go a little overboard. Like I probably will in that spot, for example. I'll show you when it's done. All you're really doing is adding a little bit textured look, a little, make it look a little more uh, realistic and less like sides. 
few more pieces. Now I'm applying this Mod Podge to a few select spots on the base. And then I'm going to drop some gravel over it. I have two different It's not gonna hurt it. 
But uh, yeah, so that's why I didn't really touch that one. So you're gonna wanna have it sit here for a good while, maybe an hour or two, or you know, just kind of test it periodically. But you really gotta be patient. You can't just run on to the next step because it's gonna be a lot of dry brushing, and dry brushing doesn't work when your dry brushing is soaking wet. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So now that it's dry, it's gonna look something kind of like this. So. The pink is still coming through, but that's fine because honestly, we're gonna hit it with a few more things. We're gonna hit it with a wash or two and a couple dry brushes, but uh, yeah. So this is basically what you want. You want it to where you can dab it and nothing's coming out, right? Yeah. That way, if you're transporting and playing with this, you know, if you bring this over to a friend's house to use during a DD &D game, you don't want to get sand all over the place, you know what I mean? <laughs> or if you're just, you know, keeping it around in your own place, but you know what I mean? And listen, it's not that same foamy texture and consistency anymore. See how it sounds more firm than it would against, like, a normal little block of styrofoam. Look at the textures. It sounds more rough and rigid. Alright, so basically what I'm going to do um, is I'm going to paint certain areas as if there is lava. Okay. In a couple little spots, I'm going to have some of it pool up in a couple of these little spots that uh, did not have any of the uh, substrate really seal and adhere to it. So there's going to be a couple little bubbles there. Um, so in this area, again, there's going to be like three or four little bubbles of this lava. And then around it, I'm going to make the coals. Basically, I'm going to make the little rocks look like hot coals, right? So they're going to look like they're glowing in and around this area. So I'm going to hit this with the various reddish orange washes and brighten it up a bit. Maybe put a little bit of yellow in a few select spots. But uh, basically I am just going to um, hit this all with a black wash, darken it up, and then hit it with a couple uh, darker grays and mid grays dry brushes um maybe put a little bit of like orangish reddish colorations on the edge or the base of these larger rocks here where it's touching the smaller rocks and the lava to make it look like it's glowing with warmth but yeah that's ultimately what we're doing so i'm going to show you a couple little clips while i'm doing it periodically all right so we hit uh, with some reddish orange the actual ground itself and then these rocks we just hit it with that normal oil well, it's just basically just a black wash is the best way to explain it and uh, yeah now you can really see the textures and everything it kind of looked like a mess a little bit when you put the mod posh because it all clumps together but then once you start uh, you know applying some shadows with those washes and uh, bringing back some highlights and definition with dry brushing which we haven't done yet then it'll really uh, pop more but uh, at this stage it's pretty important to just be aware of um, how wet it is you know uh, washes take a little while to dry mod podge takes a while to dry so you just kind of have to be aware of that because if you start dry brushing too early you will start spreading the ink and the paint that's on the dry brush around and everything's just gonna kind of blur together uh, and you're gonna have to fix up quite a few spots if you uh, you know don't wait for it to fully dry off but this gives the rocks a nice little reddish glow and then i'm gonna dry brush in the certain areas back some blacks and grays to the you know actual rocks themselves but with that wash in there it'll look like the base of them have this reddish glow so it'll just make it look like they're rocks but they're hot rocks now and then in a few spots most notably over here and then in a couple little spots here the little poolings <coughs> we're gonna actually make it look like uh, full-on lava all right 
right, there we go. And now I just added various combinations of orange and a bright neon yellow to a few select areas. And I did lightly touch with some of the orange, yellow, and the yellow, um, you know, the edges of some of these rocks very lightly. I'm going to go back and dry brush a little bit more in this area to bring out uh, both some of the grayish colors, the blacks, as well as the uh, yellows and orange. That way it's not just like that muddled maroon kind of color. But you'll be able to pick out individual colors a little bit more. I'm also going to hit the rocks with a little bit more uh, coloration as well. Some blacks and grays and shades. So, it'll look a little bit different, uh, but uh, it's coming along pretty nicely. 